Amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for all who came in the building on today. Hallelujah. I guess the facts and Mary are out there in the building. Amen. And for those who are online, amen. And um, for God, for God to see this day, amen. He didn't have to let us see it, but we did. Amen. Yes. So we got that opportunity. And I'm excited about that. Amen. So let's forget about what happened on yesterday, but this is a new day. So let's pray before we go any further. So, Father, I thank you, God, for this day you made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Ask you, God, to have your way as you get the glory. As you get the honor, God, let us not do things as usual, God, but let us do things with you, normal, God, in the name of Jesus. We serve and worship you and praise you on today. As you got to touch the hearts and touch the minds, and Holy Spirit, to have your way as we participate in our healings on today, as we participate in our deliverances on today, as we participate of giving ourselves away over to you, Father. We so said, have your way on today here at Household Bay Church, as we're here in the building, God. Have your way for those who are at home, online, watching, those who may watch throughout the week. I just ask you, God, to have your way, God, as we sent this place, God, with you, God, the atmosphere of you, Father, we're building us with your love, your mercy, kindness, God. So have your way in the name of Jesus. Have your way as you get the glory, the honor, and the praise. Hallelujah. So we give you some time to gather your family and friends and let them know we are on. And if you want to come here in the building this afternoon here at 219 on Market Street, Women's of Delaware, 19801 Vermore. Welcome to come here. There is a seat here for you. Amen. Amen. But you can hear the word on today. And even as we praise and worship, and amen, as we acknowledge him, and that's what we're here to do. So as I've been talking about the word, uh, God, I um, spoke about that. If you raise your hands, we surrender. We'll give it over to him. I mean, I'm reminded, I was writing down something about when um, people get arrested. Amen. This is it. They get the Miranda rights made to them. They say, you have the right to remain silent. Anything you do, say, can it will be, you know, used against you in the court of law. So it's just imagine if you got arrested by the Holy Spirit, amen. You have the right to remain to praise his name. Amen. We're going to do that. We're going to get to the, the glory. Amen. We're going to get arrested amen. by him. Yes. Amen. So we can surrender over all the praises yes. unto him. Amen. So we'll just continue to do that because God sent the Son. He did it in all the part of my sin because of his death. The prayer when he rose. Amen. Mm -hmm. So what more can we do just to give his name some praise? And again, there are people walking around in the natural with weapons. They're using them and they're loaded. I'm telling you, they use the spiritual weapons that God has given up to you. And we got to be loaded with the praise. Amen. So we can receive back in him because we have a connection with him. He gets God's attention. Amen. When he said that we're doing what we are supposed to do and with we're using the spiritual tools. So I'm asking you to get in as uh, Sister Janae Milton comes in with the praise and worship. Amen. We're doing this. We have work to do. Amen. We are soldiers. We're army soldiers in the army of the Lord. Amen. So clap for Sister Janae. She's coming up. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Uh, I just, Amen. While um, Pastor Tina was talking, um, I felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me that we need to raise our expectation this yes, afternoon. Yes. Because the Lord, He has something that He wants to release to all of us today. Amen. But we have to raise our expectations. So if we could just begin to just lift up our hands yes. and just say something sweet to Him, God, we love You. Yes. We set our heart upon You. We fix our gaze on You, Jesus. We thank You for what You're going to do today, Jesus. We thank You, Lord. We thank you, Father. We thank you that this is a place for miracles, for signs, for wonders, God, for healing, for prophetic words. God, we thank you for speaking to us and through us, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. We give you thanks this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. God, we raise our faith in this place, Father. We thank you, Lord. This doesn't have to be another service, another regular service, Jesus. We raise our expectation in this place, Father. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. For every need, Father. Every petition that's on our, on our hearts, Father. We yes. lay at your feet this morning. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father.
Yes, Lord. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 He is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father Lord, Hallelujah. For you are here with us. We thank you, Father Lord, for you are protector. You are provider. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we use our weapons, hallelujah, to praise and worship, hallelujah. You give a connection unto us. You provide, hallelujah. You heal. You deliver. You protect. We thank you, Father Lord. Every time we come into your presence, we're going to magnify your name. We're going to lift our heads up and surrender over to you, hallelujah. We're going to give your name the praise. We're going to use our mouths, God, as weapons, God, to give your name praise, God. Give you thanks, hallelujah, because you are worthy to be praised, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah, because you were in us, hallelujah. And for that, hallelujah, we thank you, we praise you, hallelujah. We thank you and we praise you, hallelujah. We adore you, hallelujah, hallelujah. For the breath, hallelujah, that breathes. And we have to get to breathe. Everything to get up to breathe, hallelujah. To take a breath, hallelujah. To put our foot on the floor. We're walking, hallelujah. We have our right mind, hallelujah. Our right mind right now. As you touch our minds right now in the name of Jesus. As we keep, hallelujah, you are in our minds. Keep you, God, in our spirit, God. We let you rule, God, in the name of Jesus. And abide, hallelujah, for you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Just think about his goodness and his mercy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You are so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We adore you, God. We magnify your holy name. Thank you, Jesus, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're awesome, God. You are so awesome, God. You are so awesome, God. Hallelujah. You're awesome, God. Hallelujah. You're awesome, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You are so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We give your name the praise, God. We give your name the praise. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he is worthy. For he is worthy. For he is worthy. For he is worthy. He is so worthy. He is so worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. We give your name the praise. We give your name the praise. We give your name the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, God. Hallelujah. For you sit on the throne. Hallelujah. You reign. You reign. Hallelujah. You are in control. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And we surrender everything, God, over to you. Hallelujah. All of our problems, God, everything that you need. Imagine we're just trying to see how we're going to figure it out, how we're going to work it out, God. We give it over to you on today, at this moment, in this hour, God, in the name of Jesus, God. Hallelujah. We give it over to you, God, and we thank you, God, for what you've already done, God. We thank you for your manifestation that's taking place, God. We thank you in advance, God. We thank you in advance, God. We thank you in advance, God, and it is so it is done in the name you, of Jesus. In your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, it's in your name, Jesus. In your name, Jesus. It's in your name, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If you're at home, you can say thank you, Jesus, at home while you're in your car. Wherever you at, you have that power, that liberty, that freedom to just say thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, because you are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is personal. Hallelujah. This is personal. Hallelujah. It's personal. It's personal. It is personal. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. It is personal. Hallelujah. We have a relationship with you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're so worthy to be praised. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. You're worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, let's praise the Lord for how good he's been. He showed up for us. He's doing it. Hallelujah. That's why we come. Hallelujah. We come to him and show up. Yes, Lord, we thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. 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 Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody got something to give you and thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank you.
right? That's, that's not whatever you used to be. You don't answer to that any longer, right? It's not what people say. You don't answer to them. You answer to God. And the word the Lord gave me today was from a slave to a son. It's a continuation. Because that's who we are. We're supposed to view ourselves no longer as slaves to sin, but in our relation to God, we're supposed to view ourselves as son, sons. Yes. And when I was asking the Lord, seeking the Lord, why am I giving words like this? And the Lord said to me, I'm trying to show you who you are. And I'm trying to show the people that you're giving the word to who they are. Yes. And this is what he said that really hit me. He said, independent of anything else, I'm trying to show you who you are, independent of anything else. Yes. I'm going to tell you what he meant by that. This is so good. Yes. If you ask somebody who they are, they'll begin to tell you what they do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm this. Wow. I work at Comcast. <laughs> you know, I got a certain number of kids. You know, I'm married. That's not who you are at the core. God is trying to show us who we are independent of anything else. If, if I stop pastoring this church today, who would I be? Right? If I lose my job at Comcast tomorrow, who would I be? You know? That's, that's who, uh, we, we have to answer those questions. Like, who am I despite what I have or don't have? That's when you find out who you are in God. Amen? So last week you were telling us you're no longer a slave to sin, which means you don't have to answer anything. You, you only answer to me. You know how free you are when you yes. only answer yes. to God? That's freedom. Right? That's freedom. So today he wants us to go even further. So we're going to go as far as we can. And if I can't get too far, then we'll just pick up next week. Amen. Amen. We give honor to Apostle Vicky. Gladly with us Amen. this afternoon. We honor you. Amen. That's our sister in the Lord. She supports us and we support her. Yes. Amen. Her and her husband, Pastor Grid. Amen. And we give honor to everybody here yes. and honor to everybody watching. Yes. Amen. But real quick, we just want to see how far we can get into this. And I pray that you guys receive it. Amen. Because, again, God is showing us who we are in him. And my God, if we grab a hold of it, Galatians 4 and 7. Galatians chapter 4, verse 7. So you are no longer a slave. Everybody got it, sir. For you are no so you are no longer a slave, but a son. Yes. And since you are a son, you are also an heir yes. through God. Yes. You are also an heir through God. I want to be speaking, as I say, from a slave to a son. I want you to know before we begin that that word son includes you ladies. I told y'all before when I preached that the, the biblical writers often spoke in the masculine, mm -hmm. right? All, but that word, rest assured, that it includes you. Yes. Amen? Yes. You are as well sons of God. Amen? Those of us who have come to God by faith in Christ are slavery to sin and to the law is over. Last week we talked about that. We're no longer slaves to sin and we're no longer slaves to the law. The law, the Bible tells us, was a schoolmaster, right, to show us that we couldn't keep it. And we would have to place our faith in Christ who, who kept the law, kept it, every dot and two, every jot and two of the law he kept. So when we place our faith in Christ, right, then we keep the law through him. Amen. So we are no longer slaves to sin or to the law. You know that people who still try to keep the law today? There are people out there still trying to keep the law. In their mind, they think they're keeping it. If they could only see, right? Because these same people, when I'm not saying any names, who say they're keeping the law, they're full of hate. 
spewing, spewing uh, racism. You know what I'm saying? That's a whole nother sermon. We have become God's beloved children. Amen? And as children of God, we are also heirs of God. Yes. Got to grab a hold of that. Yes. Watch this. Because we are in Christ, we are entitled to share in all the inheritance that is due him from God the Father. You all missed that. We are heirs of God, which means because we are in Christ, we are entitled to share in all the inheritance due Jesus. We are entitled to everything that is his from God. Because God views us, this might be hard for some of y'all to accept. God views us just like he views Jesus. He's trying to show us who we are. Because that's hard for some of us to accept, but that's the truth in God. He no longer sees us as what we were. He sees us now just like he sees Jesus because of what Jesus did and us placing our faith in him. So we become an heir. What that means, and we have to accept this by faith, what that means is that we are completely provided for. I don't care if you have a need right now. God will make that need, meet that need. Amen. That means that we are completely provided for. We are protected. We are loved. Somebody say that to me. God loves me. God loves me. Don't that make you feel good? God loves me. We need to know that. We are loved and we are included in the plans and purposes of God. God wants to use each and every one of us here. Amen. Amen. Without Jesus, we have nothing. Let's settle that. We know that. But because of Jesus, we have everything. We are in him by faith. And by faith, we go from a slave to sin, to a slave of Christ, and from a slave to Christ. Through maturity and faith, we move from a slave to a son. That comes with maturity. See, we have to view ourselves as a slave to sin, I mean a slave from sin, and a slave to God. So that we know that we have to obey whatever child to call us. Call us. That's, what, that's not what God was showing us last week. We have to view ourselves as a slave to him so that we don't go run into whatever flesh tries to say or somebody else tries to say. We have to say, no, I'm a slave only to God. Mm -hmm. And then as we mature, we move into sonship. Yeah. How we, wh why, why? Because a son no longer obeys out of fear yeah. or because they have to. A son obeys out of love. That's what God wants us to be. That's how God wants us to act. That's how God wants us to walk. I do what my father say, not because I'm afraid I'm going to do something to me. Right. No, I do, what I, I do what he said because he loves me and I love him. Yes. <laughs> Didn't Jesus say, if you love me, you would do yes. what I command you? That's what a son does. Amen? So God wants us to walk as sons and daughters of God. Fully loved, fully protected, fully provided for, fully covered in him. With him, he's with us every minute, second, hour of the day. So I can walk in confidence. I'm not afraid of what's going to befall me because the Bible says, no evil shall befall me. Why? Because God is with me. Right? That's how God wants us to walk. That's how God wants us to carry ourselves. And listen, it don't take a long time. Maturing spiritually is not the same as maturing physically. Maturing physically, you have to grow with time. Maturing spiritually is all on you. How close you want to get to the Father? How close you want to get to the Father? It's all on you. Because he said, if you draw near to me, I'm going to step right back. I'm going to step right close to you. If you draw near to me, I'm going to draw near to you. So how you want to walk in God, how confident you want to be in God, how, how, how close you want to be to him, it's all on you. Amen? Amen? Last week we talked about how in Christ we are no longer slaves to sin. 
we become slaves to, to, to Christ or, or slaves to righteousness because that's, that's the, as I said this last week, the only thing that we can't help but do now is right. That's the only thing that we can't help but do. You know, when we fall into, when we, when we would fall into things, say, I couldn't help it. Yeah. Right? We know why we can say that. The only thing I can't help but do now is right. right. Yeah. That's the only thing I gotta do. I ain't gotta do nothing else but what God says. I ain't gotta do nothing else but right. Amen? Mm -hmm. we, that happens when we place our faith in Him. We no longer, I said this before and I'm saying it again, we no longer have to answer the call to sin. Our only obligation is to heed the voice of the Father concerning us and do His will. Yeah. Yeah. Today we're going further to having the mindset of sons. And we take on the mindset of sons through relationship. Yeah. Right? This is not contradicting what I shared last week. This is taking us further mm -hmm. in what I shared last week. We view ourselves as slaves to Christ in regard to sin. Why? Because then we see ourselves as not having to obey it. We are no longer slaves to sin. When we view ourselves as slaves to Christ, then we see ourselves as only having to do what he says. Not what my flesh says, not what people says, but only what the Father says. Amen? Amen. Now, in regards to our relationship with the Father, he wants us to see ourselves as sons. I said this before, but the, where I got it from, Holy Spirit spoke it to me. He said, a slave obeys because he or she has to. Right? Mm. right? But a son or a daughter obey out of love. For John 1, John chapter 1, verse 12 says this. It says, yet to all who did receive him, that's Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become the children of God. If you believed on Jesus, you have the right to become the child of God. You know what that means? That means you have the right to act like a child of God. You have a right to think like a child of God. You have a right to carry yourself like a child of God. That word right in that verse means that you have the entitlement of a son. It means that you have the prerogative of a son. It means that you have the privilege of a son. And it means that you have the permission of a son. That's what that word right there means. When it says Jesus gave you the right to become the child of God, he gave you the entitlement of a son or daughter. He gave you the prerogative, the privilege, and the permission as a son and daughter of God. Anaya is my, I always use her, she loves when I do it, in, in my sermons. She's my daughter. And as my daughter, she has a right to whatever is mine. As my daughter, she has a right to whatever is mine. She lives in my house, free. <laughs> she gets food, free. Last night we was at a restaurant, she wanted to order some expensive dish. Why? And she could do it, why? Because she was my daughter. And she knew that I was going to cover the tap. <laughs> No if, ands, or buts about it. She said what she wanted and went on about her business. Right, right on her phone after that. <laughs> That's the right that she has as my daughter. That's the same right that you have as a son and daughter of God. Yes, yes. So we're gonna probably get the reason that we'll stop before because of the sake of time, right? So through Jesus we have the entitlement of sons, through Jesus we have the prerogative of sons, through Jesus we have the privilege of sons, and through Jesus we have the permissions of sons. But we don't act like it. We don't act like it. We, we say Jesus Christ is our Lord. We say I'm a child of God, but do we really know what that means? Do we really walk in? Do we really act like it? Last week we saw the power that Jesus gave us over sin. Today, we're going to see the, Jesus, the power that Jesus gave us as sons. That power is entitlement, prerogative, privilege, and permission. Amen? 
I'm going to start with a story. Hope that I get through this story real quick. But this showed me how I, it showed me, as you may say, going back, God is raising our faith. Amen. But it showed me that I, even I needed to come up Amen. in my perception of what I'm teaching today. And no, we didn't have to because it's about you too, Timmy. <laughs> in a good way. Because it's a story about both of us. It's about both of us. <laughs> Amen. But it, it is about how both of us have to come up and how we do God. Amen. So, so last week, we were asked how many members we wanted to belong to the church. Right? And the reason we were asked that, well, a couple have asked is that they, because they wanted to agree with us. You know what I mean? That these would begin to come in. Right? And I didn't say anything. I had to begin to think. I went internal, just thinking. And Tina began to say, well, we don't want a certain amount of, of numbers, right? We, we, we want souls. We want souls. That's a good answer, right? <laughs> we want souls. And I agree. That's an honorable answer. That's a, that's a church answer. <laughs> right? And then I said, um, well, we, we want those who are supposed to be with us. Right? And that's an honorable answer, too. But that's a church answer. They were safe answers. Because we don't want to be received like we don't want to be received like those people who who we have in our minds that just want people for whatever reasons they want people, right? Just say I have this many number or whatever. We don't want to be received as that. But God already knows that's not our hearts. So, so why do we feel like we gotta? And this is all of us. We want to say, I only want to do the will of God. I only want what God has for me. If that was true, you wouldn't answer that way. Because right. if you only knew what God wanted for you. Wow. <laughs> wow. Good. If you only knew what God, I just want to do what God wants me to do. Is that true? Because if you only knew. See, we, we're, we're, we, we, have, we have gotten into this. Uh, Larry B. called it church brain. <laughs> we're beginning to answer things in a church way, but but if you ask Anaya, when I asked her what she wants, she told me what she wanted. She didn't say whatever you want me to get. Mm. She didn't say whatever you can afford her. <laughs> she told me what she wanted. So we gave safe answers because we didn't want to be, we didn't want to look a certain way, right? But God already knows our hearts. God already knows our heart that we're not in it for this, for these reasons, right? Whatever those reasons may be. He knows that we want to do his will. So why do we feel like we got to keep saying it? Right? God knows we've been faithful to this for six years, right? Without, without chasing anything. Yeah. We ain't got to prove it no longer. God is like, walk in it. If you really want what I want, if you really want what I want, then you will walk in it. Yes. Right? He knows that we ain't trying to do nothing. We ain't did nothing crazy yet. <laughs> right? We ain't took nothing from the church yet, so why do we feel like we got to keep saying it? You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? God knows our heart. He knows we're not in it for the numbers, right? So, and he knows we're he knows we're, we're, we're being faithful, right? He knows we're trying to be faithful. God said to me, well, instead of just instead of trying to be faithful, just be faithful. Instead of trying to be led by the Holy Spirit, just be led. You ain't gotta try. Instead of trying to be humble, just be humble. Instead of trying to be a son and daughter of God, just be. Holy Spirit says to me, if you really want those who, who are supposed to be here, you want to say, I want everybody. <laughs> because, is that what God wants? Everybody, yeah. He wants everybody. The Bible says that God wants all to be saved. Yeah. 
and come to the truth of the knowledge of God. So if we really had the heart, and I'm not saying that we don't, I'm just saying that we got to come up and really acting and behaving as the children of God. We got into this mindset of saying we want what God wants. But if you really want what God wants, you will say, I want everything. I want everybody. Now, that don't mean everybody going to come, right? But I'm open to whoever God wants to send you. Amen. Because God wants everybody to be saved. So, so I went, I, I began to say, so, 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 am I trying to act like I got the heart of God? Or am I really going to just have it? Yeah. I decided I'm just going to have it. Amen. Amen. I'm not acting. You know, the Holy Spirit showed me that I'm no longer going to act like a son of God. I'm just going to be a son of God. You don't, have to, you don't have to prove anything to anybody. And I don't have to prove that she's my daughter at all. She just walks in what I provide for her. Right? She carries herself as my daughter. Uh, this just popped into my mind. <laughs> we were uh, at one of Tina's relatives' house, and they said to her, they said, Nah, you look like your mom. Man, I said, No, I don't. I look like him. <laughs> and she was adamant about it. I was I looks like I look like him. She wanted she she wanted to look like me. <laughs> right? And she was adamant about it. That's the same way we have to be like, I, I look like the father. Yes. I walk in it. Yes. I carry yes. myself yes. in it. Yes. Hallelujah. I'm confident in it. I'm not well, what God is saying to us. Raise our expectations yes. to begin to act, yes. begin to carry ourselves as the son and daughter of God. Watch this yes. in everything. Yes. In esteem, in demeanor. And, and this, listen, that don't mean that you look down your nose at people either. Mm -hmm. Because Anaya, again, that's my daughter. She's not looked down at nobody. She just knows who she is. That's my dad. You somebody else's child, and that's it. That's how God wants us to take care of ourselves. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the Father said, he's me, we have to stop trying to be the sons and daughters of God and just be the sons and daughters yes. of God. He said, stop this false humility. Because we think we're hum humble. I'm just trying to do the will. Oh, you're like, no, you ain't. Cause, because you say that and then you go do so, something totally different. That's false humility. Acting like you want the will of God and then going to do something else. That's, that's false humility. Acting like I humble myself before the Father. Acting like I want what God wants for me. Acting like I believe who God says I am and then I succumb to what people say or what was said. That's false humility. True humility is submitting to what the Father says and walking in it. That's, that's, that's true humility. False humility, again, is acting like we want what God wants to happen, to happen, and then doing something completely opposite of it. True humility is submitting ourselves to what the Father says and then letting it happen. Yes. That's, that's really Wanting what God wants. It's God, whatever you want, do it. My hands off of it. Yeah. I say yes, and that's it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So so today, let's make our minds up that we're not going to act no more. Yeah. We're going to do. Yes. We're going to be. Yeah. Amen? The Holy Spirit said to me, Jesus. Yes, Lord. only when there is something wrong in a relationship between a parent and a child where they feel like they have to prove themselves. Only when there's something wrong in a relationship between a parent and a child do they feel like they have to prove themselves. Now, they may want to please their parent. That's different. You may want to please, they may want to please their parent. 
That means, you know, I want to do this because it's going to make my mom happy. I want to do this because I wanna, it's going to make my, 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 my dad happy. But they should never have to prove themselves. i got to prove myself to be accepted. i got to prove myself to, to feel loved. The Holy Spirit said, only when a relationship, only when someone is wrong in that relationship does that child feel that way. And then he said, the father doesn't want you to prove yourself to him either. Now, we, we, we may want to please the father, but you ain't got to prove yourself. Why? Scripture says that you are already approved. You are already approved. You are already accepted. So you ain't got to work to be accepted. Right? You're just doing what the Father wants you to do out of love for the Father, not out of his love for you. Amen? That's the difference Amen. between sons and slaves. Sons, again, operate out of love. Amen. We do what the Father wants us to do because we love him. We do what the Father wants us to do because we love him. And we want what the Father wants for us because he loves us. Amen? Amen. He said, we might not approve of what, we might not approve of all that our children do, right? But even when they know that we don't, they don't approve, we don't approve what they do, they still know, they should still know that they are loved, right? Our oldest daughter knows that, right? We don't approve of what she does, but she knows that she can still call home and get her needs met. Yeah. She knows that every now and then she can check her cash app and there might be some money sitting up in there. Because even though we don't approve, she knows she's still loved. That's what the Father wants us to do. We are accepted and loved as sons and daughters of God. Then the Holy Spirit led me to this scripture and it shows us the mindset of Jesus. Jesus had the mindset of a son. He knew who he was, right? And the Holy Spirit said, that's the mindset that we should have. Because we are heirs and joint heirs yes. of Jesus. Which means, we are, again, we, we're just, the, the Father views us just like he views Jesus. Mm -hmm. John 8, 29, Jesus says this. This is the, 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 the right that Jesus gave us is the, is, the, is the same right that he walked in. Right? Jesus walked in the entitlement, right? And we probably have a problem with that word, but we, we don't understand what it really means. Let me show us what it really means. We have to know this, right? When sin came into the world, everything fell, right? Even the meaning of words. Even the meaning of words lost the intent that the Father gave them. You can say it now. Go out in the world or in the, in the world or in the West Coast and say church means something opposite of what we're doing here right now. Words have lost their meaning. The world get a hold of stuff and totally degrade it. So when we think of entitlement, we think of somebody acting like something that like something belongs to them that, that, that's not really theirs. That's not what entitlement really means. Right? When we hear about prerogative, we think of Bobby Brown. I do what I want to do. That's not what prerogative means. <laughs> right? So I'm going to show us. Right? What Jesus gave us in, in the right, in the entitlement, in the, in the, in the uh, 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 prerogative, in the, in the privilege, in the permission of sons, he walked in. And that's how we're supposed to walk. So let's see how far we get real quick. It's 122. My goodness. Good, good. So, John 8, 29, Jesus said this, And he who sent me is with me. He has not left me, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. Jesus said, I always do what's pleasing to the Father. Always. There was no iota of displeasing the Father in Jesus' mind. None. Jesus carried himself like the Father was with him all the time. That's how we're, that's how we're supposed to carry ourselves. Like the Father was with us all the time. 
Jesus never struggled with proving himself to the Father. The Father told him for everybody to hear that this is my beloved son and I'm pleased with him. So he never struggled with having to prove himself to the Father because he knew that the Father was pleased in him. Scripture says, well pleased. Right? And Jesus held to that. And then he said, because he, because he heard what the Father said, he said, I always do what pleased the Father. The Father wants that to be our mindset. I always do what pleases the Father. Again, I might mess up. I can get it right, but then I step right back into I always do what pleases the Father. We have to carry ourselves in the mindset that the, that the Father is pleased in me. I always please my Heavenly Father. Why do I say that? Because that's how Jesus walked. And again, you are heirs and joint heirs, which means you are just like Jesus. You are no longer a slave. You are a son. So, according to John 1 and 12, that's the verse that says Jesus gave us the right. That means that we have the entitlement, prerogative, permission, prerogative, privilege, and permission to become the sons of God. And I always give definitions, and this he needs to snap at me because you know, I don't consider, I probably don't say words right all the time, but I know what they mean. <laughs> right? So if you get mad with me, we should say something, I say, you need to use that word right. You know what I'm saying? Good. But, but knowing the definition of words is, is, is powerful. Yes. So I would say this to anybody. When you're reading your Bible, keep a dictionary next to you. Yes. Because knowing what the words mean helps us walk in it. So I said that to say this. When it says that we have the power to become the children of God, that means that you have the right to begin to be. Yes, yes. You have the right to come into existence as, to act as. Jesus gave us the right to act like him in the earth. That's what the scripture says. The Bible says that we are just as Jesus was, so are we in this world. So are we in this world. So we carry ourselves like Jesus did. Again, I keep saying we're heir. Let me tell you what heir means. Heir means someone who is legally entitled to the property or rank of another person on that person's death. Didn't Jesus die? So we're entitled to his property, what belongs to him. When we believed on him. We're entitled, the definition said rank, which means his position. We're entitled to his position. That's what right means. We have the right to act like him. We have the right to carry ourselves like he did. What it boils down to is what's, what was Jesus's or what is Jesus's is ours. What is Jesus's is ours, but we don't believe it. I know it's hard for us to accept it. This is why we got to get into the word. Amen? The Bible says, I'm getting a little ahead of myself. The Bible says in Romans that even the creation is groaning for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. Creation is screaming out like, yo, can y'all come on and recognize yeah. who y'all are because you're tired, of, you're tired of being in subjection yeah. to what sin is. Mm -hmm. What that means is creation is screaming like, God wants us to recognize who we are. Yeah. And then when Jesus finally does come, the whole world will see who the sons and daughters of God truly is. So Jesus gave us the entitlement, prerogative, and privilege, and permission of sons. We're going to look at those and see that Jesus carried himself in those so that we can carry ourselves like that. We want to do entitlement, and then we're going to stop, and then we'll pick it up next week. Amen, because it's almost 1.30. And I don't want to hear the jet mouth. That's the guy that owns the building. Amen. <laughs> All right, so.
So we're going to see that Jesus walked in these, and also we're going to see, as I said, we can't be thrown off by the world's tainted definition of these words. The world takes words and gives them fallen definitions, and then we let those definitions mess up what we think about. We got to see these words for what God meant when he gave them words, right? You know, God gave, God created all the languages. He gave the meanings of all the words, right? So, Entitlement is the fact. It's the fact of having a right to something. It's not thinking that you have a right to something that's not yours. That's not what entitlement is. That's what we think it is. Because we say when somebody, you're entitled. That means somebody acting like they deserve something that they don't. That's not the definition of the word. The definition of entitlement is the fact. Fact is something that is true. Right? Entitlement is the fact of having a right to something. The fact of having a right to something is it's yours. It's the fact, right? Jesus gave us the entitlement of sons, which need to have access, which belong, access to what belongs to the Father, and Jesus also walked in this entitlement. Again, it's not acting like something is yours that you don't deserve. It's the fact of fact that something is yours, right? So John 6.15, this is what Jesus says. Think about it. Jesus says this, all that belongs to the Father is mine. Yes. That's what Jesus said. Is that entitlement? Or is that, or, or, or is that him knowing what was his because of his relationship to the Father? Mm -hmm. And Naya can say that because of her relationship to me. She can say all that my dad has is mine. She knows that she has access to it. That's how we're supposed to carry ourselves. Jesus said, all that belongs to the Father is mine. Only a son or a daughter can talk like that. As a son or a daughter, you can talk like that. Philippians 4.19 says this, And my God shall supply all of my need according to what? His riches and glory. If God wants to supply what you need according to his riches and glory, that means what he has is yours. Yes. He's going to supply your needs with what he has. Yes. What the Father has is yours. What is his is yours. Mm -hmm. And he said he supplies it in Jesus Christ. All that belongs to the Father is ours. Listen, we're not demanding anything. A son doesn't have a demand. A son just acts. Again, if I don't got to demand anything of me, he just acts. And if I have it, he got it. It's kind of the same thing with the father. We act. He has everything. So he provides. So this is not us thinking in a way that we're not supposed to think. This is us just acting as a son or a daughter. And again, I know it's hard because we haven't been taught that we are sons and daughters like that. Right? We've been taught that we just get saved and we just keep on trying. <laughs> it's not what the Father wants. He says, high time that we begin to act like sons and daughters. Luke 12, 32 says this. The Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. That's what it says. The Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. What is the kingdom? Everything that belongs to him. The kingdom includes everything. Everything. It's the Father's pleasure to give us the kingdom. So no, we're not demanding we're just receiving as sons and daughters. A son or daughter don't have to demand. A son or daughter just ask. Amen? Amen. I'm going to share this and then I'm going to stop. The father took me to the parable of the prodigal son, or what we call the parable of the prodigal son. Right? And he shared with me that, he shared with me in a whole different way. 
He, and, and he said, this is really not the parable of a prodigal son. It's, a, it's the parable of a loving father and two immature sons. It's the parable of a loving father and two immature sons. Why he said, well, the younger son was the one that left, right? The younger son was immature because he was demanding what he thought was his. Like he earned anything. <laughs> what he was demanding really belonged to the father. And if he was, and if he was going to have anything, it was because the father had it. Right? So he was immature in demanding what he thought was his. He demanded his, inher his inheritance. He only had an inheritance coming because, of, because the father laid something up for him. That's the only thing he had inheritance. Right? What he was to receive came from the father, which means without the father, he had nothing. All he had to do was go and talk to his father. This is what the father was saying. This is what God showed me in this parable. All he had to do was go talk to God. About, uh, talk to, I said God, because God is, is really a parable of a relationship with the father. All he had to do was go talk to his father and tell his father how he was feeling. That's all he had to do. I'm feeling, you know, unfulfilled. I feel like I want to, you know, go do whatever. If he was mature in his relationship with the father, he would have went and communicated that. But in his immaturity, he went and demanded his inheritance. Right? He, he, he went and demanded his inheritance and went looking for fulfillment outside of the father. The Bible says he, would, he went uh, uh, and wasted his inheritance in, in riotous living, where he was doing all kinds of stuff, seeking fulfillment. And then when all that was going, he said, let me go back to the Father. Let me go back to my dad. When I go back, I'm going to say, I'll just be a slave. The Father said, no, you're, you're still a son. What he came to realize was that after all, after trying to find fulfillment, everything he needed was in the Father. In the beginning, all he had to do was go talk to his dad and say, you know, I'm feeling, well, however he was feeling, and the Father would be able to help him in that, right? And then the older son was immature because when the younger son returned, he didn't realize that his, father, that his brother could have died. The father said to him, your, your brother who was dead is now alive, has come back home. He didn't realize that his brother did not have to come back home, right? Then the older brother was immature because he was upset. He was upset that the father threw the younger son a baby when he came back home. He told the father, you never threw me a baby. You never threw me a baby. Right? And the father said, why, why do I need to throw you a banquet? You're here. If you want a banquet, all you got to do is ask. You can throw one today. That's what he pretty much was saying. If you want, if you want a banquet, all you got to do is ask me. You're, you've been here with me. Why do I got to throw you a banquet? Everything that I've got is yours. If you want a banquet, just tell me. Everything I have is yours. All you got to do is asked. Both of the sons were immature in, in regards to their relationship to the father what God was saying to me. They didn't fully grasp their father's love for them. And they, didn't, and they didn't fully grasp that he was with them. They were with him. He was with them. And they, they had access to him all the time. All that they had was his. And then the father he loved both of them unconditionally throughout the whole ordeal. He loved the younger son and his immaturity, him going out, doing whatever, and then coming back home, accepting him. The older son and his immaturity, the father still loved him. He was, the father was loving throughout the whole ordeal. But the father was saying to me, and we want to end with this, we have to mature in our relationship with the father. Knowing that he is with us all the time. Knowing that he is with me. Or I ain't got to seek fulfillment in anything else. 
I ain't got no looking. Everything that we need is in him. If I'm feeling some kind of way, I just got to go talk to him and, and find out why I'm feeling like this. If I'm feeling depressed or, or that, I got to go to him. But Father, why am I feeling like this? Am I looking for acceptance outside of you? Am I looking for fulfillment outside of you? Am I looking for, you know, somebody to recognize me outside of you? Everything that we need is in the Father. That's how he showed me this, this parable of the prodigal son. They didn't realize that they were sons and everything that they had was in the Father. Everything. And it's the same thing for us. Everything that we need, that we want, that we're looking for, that we're desiring, if it's in a name, if it's in a title, or whatever, it's in the Father. The greatest thing that you can be called is a son and daughter of God. The greatest thing. The greatest. So we're going to end with that. We're going to pick up uh, next week with um, with prerogative. But as you leave today, keep it in your heart. Keep it in your mind that you are a son or a daughter of God. And what that means is that the Father is with you. The Father is for you. Nothing can come against you that the Father won't get you out of. You don't have to be afraid because the Father is with you. Have you ever seen a child afraid when their dad was with them? Mm -mm. We raised a Naga. I told a Naga uh, when, when we were sending her to daycare. And uh, I was like, man, we made sure that we didn't send her to daycare until she was able to talk a little bit. Right? So she'd be able to tell us anything, if anybody said or did anything to her. Right? And I always told her, I said, listen, you tell me if anybody touches you where they shouldn't touch you, they say anything to you that they shouldn't, shouldn't say, you tell me. And I told her this. And if they say that they won't beat me up, know that they can't beat me. <laughs> I told her that so she wouldn't be afraid to tell me, you know, you know people. Say that. I'm, if you tell your dad or you tell your parent, I'm going to do this to you. Right? This, that's how they put fear in kids so that they don't tell them anything. So I said, if they tell you that they're going to beat me up, they can't beat me. Right? So there's one particular time I went to go pick her up from daycare. And uh, they say, hey, nine. And first thing she said was, Daddy, Miss, uh, what was the lady's name, Tina? Miss, her name is Trevor Tina. Oh, what are we gonna say? He said, Daddy, this whatever her name touched me on my butt butt. And she said, Lady was right there, lady said, and now are you telling on me? And I said, Yeah. We told her to tell us anytime <laughs> anybody does anything to her that they shouldn't be. And what happened was, Anaya was touching something that she shouldn't touch. She just popped her a little bit on her butt. But the simple fact that she they knew. From that point, that Anaya would tell her parents anytime anything happened, they treated her different. I share that to say that we don't have to fear because the Father is with us. He has our backs. We are sons and daughters of God. Really. For real. We have to let, that, let our mind capture that. We are really the sons and daughters of God, just like Jesus. No different. Amen? Mm -hmm. No difference. There's a song that's on my heart. You know, on my heart, I love this song. It's a, um, many people probably don't know it, but I hope you can learn this song here and kind of sing it. I tell I talk to you all the time. If I can sing, boy, y'all would be in trouble. <laughs> if I can sing, I, yeah. wouldn't, I told Tina I wouldn't shut up at all. But I sing at home. You know what I'm saying? But it's a song by Ty Trippie called Savior. And it's a very easy song. You just call out who God is to you. Right? And then the chorus says, uh, it begins with Savior. And then it says, it says it twice. And then it says, the man you saved or the woman you saved has come to honor you. The, the man you saved has come to worship you. Amen. 
That song has been on my heart. And I just want to sing it real quick and then we're done. Amen. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. But, 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 but take it in. It says, it says, Savior says, Savior. 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 The man you saved has come to honor you. Y'all go too fast. The man you saved has come to worship you. So the first one says honor. Second one says worship. Save. Right? 
cries out, Abba, Father. That word, Abba, is an Aramaic word for Father, but it's deeper than our English, right? Our English is, 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 is almost surface, right? Our language doesn't scratch the surfaces of other languages, right? When you learn other languages, then you find out that the words go so much deeper. So Abba goes deeper than just English Father, right? Abba is more intimate. It, it goes further than Father. It goes deeper than Father. And what we're going to see, we're going to see next week, Abba, right, we've, been, we've been told that Abba means Father, and it does, but it's deeper than our English of Father. What Abba means is, Father, I will do what you say. Yeah. Father, I will obey you. Jesus, when he prays in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays that. He said, Father, if it's possible, could this cup be taken from me? Right? He said, Abba, Father, if possible, could this cup be taken from me? But then he says, nevertheless, you're with Abba, Father. He said, Father, I will do what you say. None, nevertheless, Father, I will obey you. God wants us to operate as sons and daughters of God, just like Jesus, meaning that we will do what he says. We will act like he says. That's act like he says, right? Do what he says, act like he says. Only, uh, in, only an intimate, obedient son and daughter can call, can call, can call God out. But he wants us to be able to call him Father. He wants us to be able to call him Abba. He wants us to have that level of intimacy and that level of obedience. That's what he wants us. So that we can really truly view ourselves as sons and daughters of God. So, so take that with you. As you walk through this week, continue to tell yourself, I'm a son, I'm a daughter. Just like Jesus. God put that part in there. Right? Because you're just like him. That's how the Father looks at us. That's how the Father views us. Amen? Amen. So next week we'll pick up right back where we left off. Father, we pray that you were pleased with everything that's been said and done this afternoon. Things kind of went the way we didn't expect. But that's what you you are our Abba. We will obey you. So we pray that we did everything that you wanted to do this afternoon. We pray that all of our hearts and minds are encouraged. We pray that everybody that watched was encouraged. You said your word would not return to you, Lord, that it would come to what you said to do. Today, we allow the word to penetrate our hearts and penetrate our minds that we begin to carry ourselves as the sons and daughters of God. So we thank you, Lord. We, we praise you. We magnify and exalt you. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. To anybody who ever watches this video, who does not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you the opportunity to make Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior. Amen. The Bible says that you were slaves to sin. Right? You were slaves to sin because Adam and Eve obeyed the devil. Right? And then sin ran rapid. Every other, every man and woman since then begins, began to be slaves to sin. But the Bible says that God sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him we no longer have to be slaves to sin, right? We don't have to be slaves to sin. We now can become sons and daughters of God. How do we do that? Through our faith in Jesus Christ. And it's not hard. All you got to do is believe on him as the scripture has said. The scripture says that he is the son of God. He is the propitiation for, for, for man and God. He is the bridge between man and God. He brings you to the Father. And when the Father brings, when the Father sees you through Jesus, 
you are now at peace with him. The world says there are many ways that lead to God. No, there is one way that leads to God. And that is fixing your faith in Jesus Christ. So I, 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 I ask you today to place your faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, his son. So all you got to do is place your faith in Jesus Christ, that he is your way to God. He is your way to eternal life. Nothing and anything else, only Jesus. And when you place your faith in him, you are saved. Right? So that's that's it. That's that's it. Place your faith in him, and then you are saved. So after you place your faith in him, we pray. We pray. So if you place your faith in Jesus today, if you recognize that you need him, you gotta get right with God. The only way that you can get right with God with God is Jesus. If you place your faith in him, then now I want to pray with you. You can follow me in prayer or you can pray to God with your own word. Because again, Jesus came so that we could be sons. So the Father wants to hear from you. You can pray along with me, but he would rather hear your voice. So I would just say you can pray to the Father, you can pray along with me. You say, Father God, today I heard the gospel that Jesus came to bring me back to you. Today I place my faith in him. And he presents me to you without sin. And I'm able to see your face in peace through Jesus. So Father God, I thank you for saving me by, by grace through my faith in Jesus. Today I will live the rest of my life. Well, today, today and forward. <laughs> I will live the rest of my life as a son of God. Amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer or something like that, you are saved. Amen. Amen. There is no other way to be saved. The, the prayer doesn't save you. Only you placing your faith in Jesus saves you. If you place your faith in Jesus today, you are saved. What you need to do, or what I admonish you to do, is continue to learn about all that is yours do and by Jesus. You do that by going to a Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church. Amen? We welcome you here at Household of Faith Church. If yes. you're watching this, you might as well come over here yeah. where we are. We are located at 219 North Barker Street, Wilmington, Delaware, 19801. We're here Sundays at 12. You can reach out to us on our Facebook page. Just say, you know, I want more information about you guys. I want to learn more about Jesus, I'm going to learn more about who, who, what God has done for me and what I can do through God. Something like that, and somebody, somebody will get back to us. Amen? So, I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. I always say this, because scriptures say this, the Bible says that heaven rejoices every time one comes to faith in Jesus. So, heaven is going crazy right now because you decided to come back to the Father. Yes. Amen. You have become a son of God. And we thank God for you. Amen. So I'm going to sit on down and digress. Amen. Um, I pray that I said something that encouraged your hearts Amen. and minds in Jesus Christ. And uh, if I'm going to say anything before I go, walk in your sonship. Walk in your daughtership. Amen. Amen. You see, Mr. Hallelujah. He was talking about your parents and the joy heirs. It's just the fact we have this Bible. You know how when people say they go to um, hear the will, what they're going to get. Amen. The will of God is right here. We got to read all what is ours. It's given to us in the Word of God. Is in this will. The will of the will of the, will of the Lord. Amen. So we have to keep that in our minds. Amen. So we you, um, you know, get down and pick up the word, and, and as Pastor is preparing for information, you about giving and part. But that song that uh, Janae had about giving thanks, that still was in my spirit and my ear. And we didn't get to the end, but I was preparing. But just remind and encourage you, 
And now, let the weak say I am strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Because of what the Lord has done for us. He said his name. Yes. You already have it for you. 
You know, but yet you're not going to have to worry about the time anymore. You ain't going to have to worry about somebody saying, oh, you want to die? No. You're going to be able to take all the time you need because teaching and preaching the word of God takes time. And people don't have that right now. They, they want that quick fix. But the quick fix is not going to hit it in these days. But just to stay encouraged, and I thank God, you know, that I was able to come, you know, Amen. keep on, keep it on going with you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Apostle. Thank you so much. Amen. So at this time, we're preparing our hearts for giving. If you're here in the building, we have envelopes here. We're to give cash. You want to give the cash app? We have dollar sign H H O F C D E. If you want to give online, you can go to www.hhofcde.org and click on giving. If you want to give by mail, that would be through Household of Faith Church, P.O. Box number 9804, Wilmington, Delaware, 19809. Amen. Amen. So as we're um, doing our giving declaration, these are words that we said back unto the Lord. We're declaring and believing. I will start out and my sister does will come up to read the press. Amen. So this is what we say out of our mouths. We believe and proclaim that God is going to do. We're going to speak these things. Amen. So they are. They are. Word, amen. So, because I am a giver, the windows of heaven are open to me and God. To me and God rebukes the devourer for my sake. I am blessed financially and receive a blessing that I cannot contain. I do not worry about the lack of knowing God supplies all my needs richly and abundantly. Therefore, I am able to sow freely and liberally. I choose to sow cheerfully, generously, and bountifully, knowing I will reap bountifully. I have an abundance, every favor, and earthly blessing. All my needs are met, and I abound in every good work. Lord, I give you the very best of all my increase in accordance to your word. I believe you, Lord, will honor your word. My due season to reap is connected to my seed time. Sowing in, in connection with my seed and obedience. I ask the Lord of the harvest for Jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, perks and benefits, sales and commissions, scholarships and grants, homes and land, favorable settlements, estates and inheritance, interest, income, living conditions, creative works, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money at the loss and stored away. Debts to be paid off, expenses decreased, and the blessings of Abraham increased healings, miracles, signs, and wonders, relationships restored, loved ones saved, divine wisdom and protection, visions and dreams, angelic visitations, harvest of souls, spiritual growth, and the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for meeting us in all our needs that he has more than enough to give to the kingdom of God. Thank you for the fresh anointing, grace and mercy, for the desires which enable us to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So thank you all who were able to give on today. Those who wasn't, I'm saying keep on proclaiming and declaring what we just read. Amen. And you will have those things. Amen. Because you're speaking it unto God. We're going to our day. And he asking him what is that we need. Amen. So we're going to speak it, complain we have, not because we ask not. Amen. So these are things in the kingdom we got to learn. Amen. Just like when you go to school, you got to learn. You got to raise your hand. Like go to the bathroom. Raise your hand and give an answer. So, amen. So we're talking about the praise in the park. You guys, we're getting ready to praise in the park. Hallelujah. August 28, 2022. This is our third year doing the praise in the park. It's going to be August 28th. We're going to have the service at from, uh, 12 o'clock to 1.30. And after that, we'll be getting festivities. So we have here in the house today, go to will be at the park, amen. Give us that praise and worship in there on that day. So I'm telling you, come on, come on. We're going to have praise in the park, amen. Okay. Okay, the fly, amen. We got some new artists that are adding on some fly now. Amen. We got a new up and coming group, amen. Dancing for the Lord, amen. Amen. He's a soldier. All right. So while he's looking, we got um, Chris Jones will be giving our poetry on that day as well. We got DJ Grants. He's going to be um, in the park, at the park. 
Amen. Turn the wheels. Amen. For the Lord, we're going to hear the word, the uh, music, and everything that's going to be taking place. And I believe we have one more artist. Mike Teasy is going to be at the party. Amen. He's going to be there rapping. Amen. Amen. So just to let you know, our uh, up and coming artist, the new artist, amen, is this for the Lord. We got Team Jesus somewhere right here in the house. Amen. They give them ready. Amen. Amen for their debut. Amen. So the add some more soldiers to the team be dancing. Amen. So I'm just asking all you guys uh, who would like to be a part of our donating um, more funds and food. Let me know. Let us know. We're still looking. We uh, um, expecting a large crowd on this year. Amen. So we want to be great on this year. So as pastors still looking, we're still trying to show y'all our new up and coming group. Amen. There we go. Amen. Team Jesus, y'all can see your faces. Amen. I don't know if y'all can see here. Look, look. Amen. Amen. And then we got Pastor Jake Coburn who will be giving the word. Amen. Hallelujah. He'll be giving the word on that day. So I'm going to just pray for us. And continue to go forward. We're doing this praise in the park. So we're going to have a blessed time. There'll be a food giveaway, um, bags of food. It will be an uh, ice cream truck. We'll have um, just numerous things that's going to be taking place. So just ask you all to tune in, come. Let me know you want to be a uh, park or coming to it. But we got our we got people who's going to be doing um, their performances for the Lord. So as we're going to end, Amen. I ask you, Father, to touch those who are here who came to build on today, and those who wanted to be here but couldn't be here. I ask you guys to touch them right now, God. And those who are watching online, I ask you to bless them right now as well. And I ask you, God, to help us, God. Every time, God, we'll pick up the weapons you're giving to us, your word, God, and your praise. Everything you've given us, we're going to use it, God, the things you're giving to us. We're going to learn the word and study it, God, so we can be protected. Amen. So we can be ready as necessary. Amen. Because we are carrying, um, we're licensed to carry. That's why I said we are licensed to carry. Amen. Because of you, God. Because you sent your son. Amen. And partner of our sins. So we thank you, God, for doing that very act of dying. And partner of our sins. And you have the blessings throughout this week. It's the strength that we need, God. In the name of Jesus, we call in your name, God. You get the glory. The honor and the praise, and I ask you that the blessings and meet us again if it's your will to come back into the building at 12 p.m. 12 at the House of Faith Church. In Jesus' name, I pray all these things. Amen. Have a good afternoon. Bye bye.